Hey guys, this is Srini and you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel, Python for Microscopists. In uh, the previous tutorial, I briefly introduced what machine learning, you know, basically is. And uh, in today's uh, video, I'm going to talk about uh, the first step towards machine learning. What is linear regression? Uh, I should say this has nothing to do with, in general, images or microscopy, but it's a uh, it's a, it's a very good introductory, you know, uh, step towards getting your feet into you know wet into this topic of machine learning. I'm pretty sure you heard of what linear regression is, and you probably have used it. In fact, if you're a scientist. I'd be surprised if you have never heard of this term or haven't used it until now. But uh, let me let me start explaining what it is. So let's say you're a biologist and you're looking at how fast the cells are growing as a function of time or how fast the cells are dying as a function of time, depending on the type of information you're trying to get. So uh, in this case, you have uh, two uh, parameters, right, or two variables. So one is an independent variable and this is time because as a function of time, something is happening. So time is your independent variable and your dependent variable in this case is uh, a number of cells, the cells that you're actually counting. So if the number of cells are growing, then initially, let's say you have certain number of cells, okay? And then uh, the number went up and then the number goes up as the uh, time goes by and, and uh, the number goes up again and the number goes up again. And in nature, nothing is an absolute straight line. Yeah, So you have data uh, as uh, time goes by. Now, you fit this to a straight line. OK, this is linear regression. You fit this to a straight line. And that line looks very good because it seems to be a very good fit for all the data points that we collected. Yeah, So this is linear regression. Manually, we are actually looking at it and saying, OK, I'm going to draw a straight line right here. Why do I even care drawing a straight line? Well, with linear regression, I'm trying to fit the data you know, from my experiment to a line so I can model it. So I can go ahead and say, OK, if I put this type of medicine, for example, the cells are going to grow at this specific rate. OK, or if you're from a financial industry, you know, uh, if these are the sales, you know, based on this, this is what we can forecast, you know, for future or this is what we can expect uh, to come in the future. So depending on your application, there is really a, a very much uh, very good need to uh, fit your data. In this example, we are actually using a linear regression. There are very, you know, many, uh, you can ac actually do this in multiple dimensions, but let's keep things simple for now. The same example, I mean, in this case, uh, the rate is going up, but uh, think of uh, actually you have a, for example, an image where you have, uh, sorry, uh, where you have uh, a whole bunch of cells right here, you know, and then you create a, an artificial wound by scratching the surface and then you have cells right there. And you say, okay, uh, as a function of time, my area, initial area is, I don't know, 1,000, let's say, okay, whatever that is. And then as the time goes by, the cells actually grow in the wounded area or, in the, you know, in the scratched region, which means my area as a function of time kind of goes down 700, 500. Eventually, my area goes down to zero. In that case, your graph would look somewhat like uh, this. OK, so your data points would be uh, negative. It doesn't matter. OK, either the slope is positive or negative. The example I'm going to talk about or the linear regression I'm talking about is uh, uh, fitting the day, fi fitting a line to the data. Now, how does that happen? So let me explain this a little bit more. So let me start by erasing everything and then expanding or taking up the whole screen so we can actually look at this. Uh, and uh, let me draw my y-axis. Okay, so now let, let's redo this uh, and let me exaggerate this. Okay, one data point is here, one data point is there, another data point is here, another data point is there, and now we need to fit a straight line through this. We all can see that, okay, uh, if I am forced to start here, I can actually start there and then actually go maybe right there. Or if I have to fit a straight line, let's say, let's do that. 
that seems to be a good compromise, right? I mean, this looks like a very good line that is a good compromise for all of the data points. Now, why can't it be, uh, let me get a bit fancy, change the color here. Why can't it be a line that looks like that? Well, it also looks okay, except if we draw a line right there, it seems to be very good with this data point, that one, and uh, but not that great with that data point. Look at the distance between the what we are trying to predict and where the actual data point is. If you look at this blue line or a purple line, then it looks like it's a good compromise for the positive points that are above the line and also for the negative points behind uh, uh, below the line, right? So this is nothing but visually we are trying to do uh, this linear regression based on least squares, okay? What do I mean by least squares? Uh, since I have the red color there, let me stick with the red line. So this data point is the actual data point, right? I mean, this data point is an actual collected data point. So this is an actual experimental observation, and this is the predicted point at that time, okay? Right there, this is the predicted, because this is uh, what we are getting out of our... Uh, uh, out of our linear regression. So the distance between the actual and predicted, ideally it would be the same point, right? So ideally the distance would be zero, in which case all my data points lie on this line, but that's not the case, unfortunately. So this distance, you can call this delta y, you know, the change, uh, uh, the distance between the predicted and the actual. And if I draw the same thing from here, that's a very long distance over there, okay? So this is my delta y right there. Since I'm saying delta x and delta y, let me put x here and let me actually put y over there, okay? So I don't wanna confuse you again. So the distance between the predicted, which is from our linear regression and the actual point that actually that we are using to draw this is the, I'm calling this delta y or if it makes your life easy, call it y2 minus y1. It doesn't matter, right? So delta y is nothing but uh, y predicted. Excuse my handwriting. I'm not good at writing on these digital pens. y predicted minus y observed or y experiment. Okay, let's call this. So this is uh, delta y. So the way the line is constructed, the way the linear least squares actually works is it minimizes this distance. Okay, so if you look at this uh, equation, it actually minimizes delta y, not just delta y, delta y squared, and y squared, because delta y in this case is negative, delta y in this case is positive, for example, then when you add all delta y's, it may be zero, but then that doesn't mean uh, that there is no uh, error. So delta y squared actually looks at the magnitude of this error rather than just focus on the, uh, uh, you know, uh, the amount, uh, focus on the uh, positives or negatives. So anyway, so this, you add them, and I put summation here for those of you who are not comfortable with math, summation is nothing but I'm adding all delta y squareds for each data point and I take an average, right? How many data points do I have? Let's say if I have n data points, I do one over n delta y squared. This is what that gets minimized. So if I have the, if I, if I repeat this exercise for various values, Okay, so I put a straight line right here. So I calculate this, this the, uh, by the way, this is called the cost function, okay? So anytime you do any uh, fitting, any machine learning in general, okay, there is always a cost function that needs to be minimized, okay? So once you minimize the cost function here, so this is the cost function here, one over N summation of delta Y squared, okay? the algorithm is trying to minimize the cost function. So wherever there is a minimum, once the minimum is achieved, that is the line that we want, okay? So the blue line, probably in this example, has the least uh, you know, uh, 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 value for this cost function compared to any other combination. So the blue line would be the uh, one that our least squares algorithm or the linear regression algorithm will uh, give us. Again, I don't want to confuse you biologists, but I hope I hope it, it, it makes sense, okay? And uh, now, how does, for example, uh, you know the equation for straight line, right? Y equals to mx 
plus C. Let's ignore C for now. Let's say the line is going from zero, so the, there is no intercept, Y equals to MX. So the way the cost function actually works is, okay, you assume you start with a value of M because it's nothing but, okay, in this example, we are just trying to find the values of M and C, right? So a line is defined by Y equals to MX plus C or AX plus B, whatever you were taught in your uh, grade school. So M, we need to find the right value for M, okay? So the algorithm starts with, or you tell the algorithm that, okay, I wanna start with a value of minus one, okay? And then uh, you calculate the cost function, okay, for the va M value of minus one. And then you calculate the cost function for minus 0.5, and then zero, and then uh, a one, and then so on. If the value M equals to one, which is y equals to x, and if you have a straight line like this, then you 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 found the right line, okay? Again, uh, uh, let me quickly, I actually uh, worked out something on an Excel sheet, so let me go ahead and bring it up here. So what I've done is I assumed a line y equals to x, okay? This is a very simple straight line. Y equals to x is, uh, is where my data points are. So this is my data points. X is one through five. Let me zoom in so you can see it, okay? X is one through five, Y is one through five, okay? So these are my data points. And then I said, okay, I don't know what the real line is, you know, that I'm trying to fit, but calculate the error for uh, M equals to minus 0.5. All I did is uh, uh, Y2 minus Y1. All I did is exactly this, okay? 1 over n summation of delta y squared. I don't want to go through that here, but you can see uh, uh, you can see that. So these are this is delta y squared. I added them, and this is uh, uh, 1 over n. You see, 1 over 5. I have five data points, and sum of all of these, which is nothing but delta y squared. Okay. So I did that for minus 0 0.5, minus 1.51. 1 .1, you see. Uh, for one, the values are zero because my equation in this case is y equals to x. Okay, so zero means that's the best value. And if I actually scroll down, I plotted those values here. For minus one, my cost function has a very high value. For value of three, my cost function has a very high value. For value of one, my cost function has the minimum value. So we found this 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 thing, you know, graphically by going through a lot of combinations here. But in reality, we don't have to do that there is an amazing uh, optimization algorithm called gradient descent, okay? So it's called uh, gradient descent, okay? Uh, if I can write it, okay. So gradient descent. So what this uh, algorithm actually does is it finds the minimum value of a cost function, okay? So let me... Uh, if this is the cost function, like if this is the uh, uh, you know function and this is the minimum value, how does it do that? It actually starts with an initial point. It doesn't matter. I mean, as a user, you'll provide where the initial point is. So let's say this is where it uh, is, the initial point is, and think of this as a a marble inside a you know U-shaped bowl or something, and then you release it. It goes down. And then it comes down, eventually it finds this middle point. But gradient descent is a bit more intelligent, okay? It actually goes down, and then it goes down, and then it goes down, and then it goes down, and goes down, and so on. Uh, these are all little steps for the gradient descent, and then it comes down here. It doesn't know that this is the minimum, and then it goes back up here, and then it's like, uh-oh, I'm going back up again. Let me come back down and then find this minimal point, okay? So this is what gradient descent actually does. And uh, how exactly it does, uh, it uses the first order differentials, and uh, this is beyond the scope of this. Uh, there are numerous videos online that you can watch but how it does it. But then basically there is an initial, point and then stepwise it goes down. What is the step size? The step size can be pretty large, right? Okay, it can come here or if it is a pretty large step size, you can go right there. If it is a, you know, this is how you can actually do that or you can use pretty small step size. Okay, very small step sizes. As you can see, small step size means you get a, a very good chance of finding this minima. By the way, this minimum, what if the well is like this? This is the actual minima but you don't want to end up right there. So if your step size is very large, let's say you may end up right here. So that's why smaller step size. And by the way, the step size is uh, uh, 
called learning rate okay learning rate and all of this terminology applies to machine learning in general uh, not just linear uh, regression okay so what did we learn today again linear regression is where you have your data points from experiment or wherever you know you get these data points and you want to fit that to a straight line and straight line has uh, an equation you know of the form y equals mx plus c uh, or y equals ax plus b whatever terminology you would like to use and uh, these two are the values that we need to find out to fit a straight line to the data points and how do we find these two values by actually using a cost function that minimizes the distance between the predicted value and the experimental value you can call it estimated value or the uh, experimental value okay and uh, the cost function for the straight line is 1 over n summation of delta y squared delta y is again the distance or the difference between the predicted and the actual okay and gradient descent is a uh, method or is a uh, uh, optimization algorithm that finds this minimum value of a cost function luckily when it comes to programming this in python uh, we just this this is just a couple of lines but i'm going through this video so you understand a little bit better when you're playing with your cost functions and when you're playing with your uh, gradient descent or learning rate learning rate again is almost like the steps that uh, that you define whether it is finer steps or a larger steps in terms of uh, finding this minima in the gradient descent. So I hope you found this tutorial to be useful. And in the next tutorial, let's actually jump into uh, real coding. Uh, and uh, if you like this video, please go ahead and like it. And if you like the series that I'm doing here, uh, please subscribe to the channel. It definitely encourages me. And uh, thank you very much.